So let me show you, I do in the ultrasonic cleaner, I have some simple green and it has been, I have some simple green and it's been warming up. I've had the heater on. I don't have that on because of that noise, but we're gonna let it keep heating up. Let it keep going as we tear this apart. GoPro, stop recording. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And today we're carburetting. These are the carburetors for the 1973 Honda CB750 Ben bike that we paid hundred bucks for. And we're gonna tear them apart to see what exactly we have. So I did reach out to a buddy, told me he had some parts and I went, we went over there, dug through his attic and then we found the, found the box with the CB750 parts in it, which worked out pretty good. Let me show you what I needed. First off, they're not complete. This is what I got with the bike. This set right here didn't have bowls. I've got one clamp, didn't have any bowls at all, nothing on the inside of the carburetors. I was missing this slide right here and this bracket is broken off right there. This guy that lifts the slide up and it's actually broken right here as well. So first thing we needed was a replacement part for that. We needed bowls. So he had bowls and three uh, clamps because we have one. So we're good on that. But then we also noticed that the carburetor was dented right here on each end. And that's just from it being moved around for years, being dropped. So it got dropped right there and dropped right there. I am going to try to see if I can knock this thing back out just with a hammer on the inside. See if I can bend that back without breaking it right there. And if I can't, I've got these. We're going to tear this car, all these carburetors down to really get them ready for reassembly because I want to check to make sure is there anything else that we need before I go ahead and order these kits. Just to have it all. I'm just trying to be organized moving forward with this build. The same thing we did with the engine. Let's get started with tearing this guy apart. So guys, we do have the ultrasonic cleaner set up because we're going to need it today. It is already warming up. The heater's warming up. I don't have that on because of that noise. And what we have soaking in it is some water and some simple green. So we'll cook them in that, hopefully to get them better. This one, I did I did wash these out just a little bit with, in a bucket with some Dawn dishwashing liquid, but this is pretty rough in here. The other thing I did is I went ahead and marked each one of these, one, two, three, and four, just to make life a little easier. And even the replacements, this one's a one and this one's a four, as you can see it right there, just to make it easier as we go forward. So let's start tearing this guy apart. Okay, I did try just a little bit to see if I could, if I could bend these back just using this pliers. And I'll show you what I did. Just here, just trying to see if I could get it, but you can already see it's starting to, to break that right there. So there's no need to. I've got these guys. So we're gonna go ahead and go with that. So just trying to get this, these screws loose using an impact. Oh, that one's already there. That's good, that one's already there. Some of these have already been loosened. Not all of them. Good, one more. Oh, good. Guys, this tray, you get them at Harbor Freight. It's like two, three, it's like maybe $5. But it comes in handy for doing just this. It's totally worth having around. It's a nice little tip just to do. I can put everything in right here, separate it by carbs, and everything's good. Nice and easy, keeps you organized. Last screw, we will have fixed the bracket. See if we can get it off. Is there another one? There we go. Awesome. We'll clean that guy up. We'll have to see if we can source these caps. I don't know if you can. It'd be nice if, they, if you could. So we'll clean that guy up. Okay, so let's pull these guys off. Again, those go for two and three. This guy will go in between. I don't need to pull them all off. I can just pull those off, leave those on the side. So I don't have to look for them. And then now the only thing I have to do is 
pull these carbs apart. Let's just pull them apart. I lost something that was probably part of a of an o-ring but we'll pull off this other side too we'll pull off this guy too and that one will go one will replace that but same thing with this guy we'll need to replace these o-rings right in here this is number three let's see if we can get this cap off okay so I got the the vice out here just to help me out a little bit and Okay, good. That's good. Let's get this guy out. This is number three. So our slide looks to be in decent shape. So good, good, good. That there, the rest of the body looks to be in, like I said, good shape. Let me get this guy off. Okay, both this one. And this one, these slides are, I mean, these, what do you call it, clamp, screw, topper, is, uh, is stuck. It's not moving. It's not moving yet. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to soak these with a little PB blaster to, because this one's been cleaned. This one, I don't know why it's so tight. We're going to soak it with PB blaster because, look, this has got all kinds of, this the float doesn't even move it's got so much gunk in there so that's probably what's stuck in here which is probably what's stuck in here so we're gonna pb blaster it and then let it soak overnight and then we'll come back at that again in the morning we're gonna leave it soak overnight with this pb blaster on it i had him in the vise and was uh cranking on him even using the big uh pipe wrench and i didn't want to damage him too much so i said let me just Hit them with some PB Blaster and let's let it soak and let's go from there. So let's see what else. I think we can pull off these drain plugs out of these bowls and then that'll be it. Then we can start putting them in there. So here's the first one of these. And then we'll just work our way down. Just undoing these drains. Oh, some of them. And if they're, if they're too tight, I'm going to... Uh, cook them and then we'll try again after they sit in the ultrasonic cleaner because yeah. they could be pretty gummed up like this one is and I don't want to strip these gosh look at that because I've actually tore the head off of one of these plugs before so prefer not to do that we are going to need to get a little that one's pretty tight, so. What is this? Oh, look, this is like just a uh, varnish from the inside of the carburetor that flaked off. That's what ends up in your clogging your carburetor up. Oh, that came off. Good. Come on now. Should just come out. We need to make sure we replace all these O rings. That one's still in there. Hard as a rock, right there. Okay, we still have this one. Let's. Should we go back to this one just for a hot second? Let me get a better one. Yeah, let's see if this one works. No. No, we're gonna we're gonna wait because we're gonna snap it off. Don't want to do that. We're gonna cook these. We got one more we gotta take off, so without that. Everything else, we're pretty good. We'll soak. We'll do them in the ultrasonic cleaner overnight, and then we'll get back to you guys in the morning. Okay, so I have two, one and two in here right now cooking. And we'll let them cook and then we'll get back to three and four. Okay guys, here's our first pass with the ultrasonic cleaner with 
these carbs. You can see they're better. This is what they look like before, like these guys. This is the first pass. This is the bowls. They're, it's getting better. So look, it's it's freed up a bunch of this stuff, but it needs another needs another, another lap, at least another one more. Look, it just flakes it off. There's that one, and then let's look at this one. This one is still pretty rough, but look, this stuff in here is just flaking off. Again, this was just one. Look at this varnish in here. This was just one. I guess maybe I ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner for about an hour and we'll do it again. We'll probably do it a couple more times. I'm not in a hurry for these, so it's not like I I need them right now or we're going to lose the shop, right? It's I'm putting all these pieces and parts together for this build so I can I can take my time with it. Look at that. It's crazy. So we'll we'll run that through again. I'm not in a hurry on these carburetors. I'm ahead of the game as far as the engine is still over here in a part, right? The rest of it is on the shelf right here. As you, you can see, it's right there and over there. We're working on gathering the pieces and parts to put this guy together. So it's not like I need to... I need to take it apart, clean it, put it back together so I can ride it this afternoon. It's not what I'm doing. So I can run these things through, and I will run these things through the ultrasonic cleaner again. I'm going to do these guys next, have everything one good run through, and then I'll cycle them through again. I'll just keep going, right? And it's an easy thing. I can have them set. I can just have this thing running in the corner. Still have to get everything else that goes in it. So while I'm waiting on that, I can just be cycling them through the ultrasonic cleaner which is what I'm, I'm gonna keep doing but look it's they're they're better on the outside they're not perfect but they're better than they were right so we'll run them through again this one is still kind of dirty but we'll cycle them through again the other good thing is I was able to free up this was uh, one of the slides I was able to free it up and then still no joy on this what I did do was take the wire brush and scrape all the barnacles off the top of this one and spray some more penetrant and I'll let it sit overnight. You know, we're the next morning on this. So we're going to give it a go to see if we can, if it's freed up. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy to move. Still nothing. Okay. Let's give this a go. I'll tell you this. This stuff is... <clears throat> Good thing is I can, I've got another, um, whatever this cap that I can put on. This one gets a little too scraped up, but it's got to come off, right? Jeez, I'm beats. Got it. Okay, guys, I just couldn't. I wasn't going to wait around anymore. I had another cap, or I have another, because I had another one of these. I said, screw it. I know how to get that off really quick. The Dremel, the little cutoff wheel on it, and we got it off. Now we can move ahead with cleaning these, because these are the replacements. Sometimes you just got to get a bigger tool. And in this case, maybe just a smaller one. So uh, now let's get those things in ultrasonic cleaner and go from there. Okay, guys. So we have the other two sets, uh, other two carbs in uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. We're going to kick that sucker on in just a moment, but not right now because it makes that noise. And 
then once we're done, then we'll start cycling these guys through again. We're just gonna keep going until they're they're perfect. We're gonna keep, we're, like I said, we're not in a hurry. We don't even have all the pieces and parts to put the engine together, so we're a little bit further down the road for carburetors. But we do wanna get it set up. And guys, this is a, a bike I paid $100 for. So I'm trying to keep the cost down. I'm not trying to not, how do I put this? If it was an all original, all together, everything there, I could see that, okay, let's, let's maybe look to restoring this thing, but it's not. It was in pieces, the, the tank has got a big dent in it. There, I do have some plans for a tank seat uh, kind of setup, that I'm, a period correct setup that I'm looking into. And if I can get it, we'll be good on that. But I'm just trying to keep the cost down. Just that's the way I, I do this. I don't, you do it the way you do it, but it kind of works in my brain like that. Uh, if I spend $100 on this motorcycle, I know just doing the simple math on this thing, I know that it, I do not have handlebars. I do not have a triple tree. I do not have uh, forks, wheels, tires, right? Just looking at that. Not to mention brakes, not to mention rebuilding set forks, all, the, all of that stuff. So I know that I, I've got more money to spend on this bike. I'm going to have to spend more money on this bike to get it going. So if I can save some money here and there, to that's what I'm trying to do. That's, that's just the way I do it. It's, it's like a, even if I don't sell them, it's like a game of Monopoly. I still want to be in good shape on them. So I still want to win that bike. And I do keep a, a spreadsheet on each bike that I have from what I pay. And, and I start with it that this is what I, I paid for the bike. And this is what, if it was finished, what I could expect to sell it for. And I start with those two numbers right off the bat. Well, I, I look to the, even before I, I, I get the bike, I look to, okay, if I get it, if I could sell it, what's the estimated value for it? And not like the top end, if I fully restore this thing, okay, it's a $25,000 motorcycle. No, it's not gonna be that, because that's not real, realistic. I always look at it, if I had to fire sale it, I mean, if I had to sell, put it for sale today and have it sold before the weekend, could I do it? And what would be the price I could sell it for? Because I think that's realistic. And then I work back from that number. So if I paid $500 for the bike and it's a $2,500 motorcycle, well, I know I don't have a whole lot of money to spend on it. And because I can't spend $2,000 on a $2,500 motorcycle, it's just that I've spent $500 for it. It just doesn't make math. It just doesn't make sense, right? So that's kind of the way I look at it. That's what I keep in the back of my, my head all the time. It's not that I'm a cheapskate. I am, but it's, it's I want to be in, in positive position on all the motorcycles, whether I keep them or I sell them. It doesn't matter. I want to be in a, a good situation on it. I, I think that that's just a prudent thing to do. So because I, there's people that have mentioned, well, you could just go ahead and put the Makuni carbs on it. And I could, and very easily, because I got a set right here, right? This is the Makuni carbs for a CB750 with the four to two intakes. I could totally do that. The problem is just the math that we just said, this is about 500 bucks sitting right here on a hundred dollar motorcycle. So uh, I, that I still have to buy a front end for that still, still don't know everything that I need to spend. So if I can get, if I can get it running with the least amount of money, that's kind of the way I, I look at it. Now is a CB 750 worth adding this to it? Does it add value to it? You know, who knows? Who knows when when you get down the line, you still have to find a uh, still have to find somebody to buy it, right? It's only worth what somebody's going to actually give you money for it. We can estimate the value, we can appraise it for whatever, but if nobody's going to give me the money, it's not it's still appraised for. It's not nobody's nobody's handing me the money. So that's kind of the way I look at it, and not to say that this is off the table. It's not off the table. It's here. We have it. Uh, I've already spent the money, but if I do put it on the bike, I still have to apply the the cost of this to the to that bike, right? It still has to, because this has got to recoup its money from somewhere, right? So that's kind of the way I look at it, and but it it makes it easy. It for me, it makes it a different kind of game 
right? I'm playing, I'm not just spending money on it. I'm not just going crazy spending money on it, but I'm actually trying to be prudent with the money I spend. It's like the, the, C, uh, the 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 1100. As it sits right now, as it sits right now, I've got about $600 in it, maybe about $640, because I did buy a new uh, uh, engine temperature sensor and a uh, fuel filter just recently. So about 630 bucks. And I've probably put 35, maybe, maybe 3,600 miles on it. So 600 bucks for 3,600 miles. That's yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good money. And uh, could I sell it for 600 bucks? Yeah. I'm not going to sell it for 600, but could I get all my money out of it? Yeah. I could get multiples of my money out of it, but I'm not going to sell it. Okay guys. So there you have it. We're going to keep cleaning our carburetors. And in the next episode with this, we'll be putting the carbs back together, putting this guy on the shelf. Hopefully we'll have the pistons and rings in by then, and we can start putting that engine together. So that'll be in the next CB750 video. So we did order a uh, $28 Amazon carb kit for this. Four pack comes with everything. We'll see how it is. Is it a good one? I don't know. Is it better than the one we have? Yeah, we'll check and see. Who knows? Maybe it's a bunch of crap. Maybe I'm wasting $28 or maybe it's the best $28 I've ever spent. I don't know. We'll find out together. So guys, there you have it. Thanks for watching yet another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And do me a favor, like, tag, share, and follow us on Instagram at Motorcycle Rewind. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day. GoPro, stop recording.